This is Ronald Mainades from the regional office of the Friedrich Naumann Foundation in New Delhi. With me here is Professor Sudhir Krishnaswamy. Uh, you are with me today not as a professor of the university, but as uh, a civil society activist. The Center for Law and Policy Research is the name of the institute uh, you are running as a founder and trustee. Uh, you are working on the interface between public policy and law. How does that work? Can you give us an, uh, an impression of what this work means? Yeah. So the Center for Law and Policy Research is about six, seven years old now, and we have focused on three kinds of interventions. Uh, we, we litigate in the courts, so we make court-based interventions. We do policy and legal research that supports various kinds of civil society action. And we uh, engage in public communication and education. So these are the three broad streams of our work, all of which is motivated by the idea of uh, defending and, and preserving constitutional values, uh, which is the primary sort of ethical motivation for the work that we do. Maybe we should stress that uh, our role as Friedrich Naumann Foundation, we are a partner for some time now, quite recent compared to other of our partnerships in India, is not in the litigation part, That's but right. it's more in the public policy and the communication. That's right. So the work that we do with you is on uh, one of our large uh, uh, interventions in constitutional and civic education. So the, our interest here is to try and communicate both to students and lawyers as well as public audiences uh, the, the values of the Constitution, the history and, and the, you know, the, the process by which these values have been arrived at, and to try and explain in an everyday sense what this means, uh, why these values are important, how they shape uh, policy choices and um, legal cases that are fought around these values, and why uh, we should not take it as a given that because we chose these values in 1950 that they're there for all time and that we need to live these values. So that's the work that we do with you. So we focus on generating uh, new information around the Supreme Court, around constitutional history, uh, as well as to communicate this in, through digital and other means. You're, you're saying in one of your publications, and I can only recommend uh, our viewers that they look at uh, the website uh, of a CLPR, the Center for Law and Policy Research in Bangalore, you say that uh, you are defending also uh, the constitution of 1950, the yeah. great Indian constitution. That somehow insinuates uh, that uh, the constitution is under assault. Oh, can you please explain? Yeah, so I, I, I would say two things. Uh, maybe if you use the word like assault, it gives a sense of crisis. Um, and but I, and I, would, uh, I would paint the picture slightly differently. And I'd say two things. One is that when the generation that framed and drafted the constitution is no longer with us. Uh, and in any uh, constitutional tradition, for a constitutional tradition to survive, it needs advocates and it needs educators and it needs uh, you know, practices that sustain a constitutional culture. Uh, we would be uh, silly to assume that well, this would somehow magically reproduce itself. But the other, uh, so, so, so just historical continuity and, and building positive cultures uh, around the constitution is important no matter what. But isn't this a function uh, the government would do or state institutes? Ideally, public education and uh, public institutions should embrace this, this task. Uh, but for various reasons in India, um, that has not happened. Uh, the average civic education that uh, our public system uh, or school system delivers is is woeful. Uh, it's the course that everyone wants to avoid, uh, and so so you know there's there's a real task here to make civic education uh, meaningful and and really uh, you know shape people's minds. But I, I'd say a second thing, which is that there's a wider political climate where ideas of liberalism and ideas of constitutional limits are somehow not so fashionable. And it just might be a product of our times. It might be the product of particular forms of politics. Uh, but this, this gives, uh, at least in the last decade, uh, it gives us a particular context. Uh, so apart from historical continuity, understanding and explaining what these values mean 
and defending them in public spaces is, is important in contemporary India. You mentioned the word liberal. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Indian constitution, it, uh, it's not used this term liberal. It says secular, it says many other things. But uh, you're, you know we are a liberal foundation. Mm -hmm. Our objective is to promote liberal principles. To what extent are you actually promoting liberal principles? And how would you explain this to, to somebody who's maybe not a specialist in, in, in liberal theory? Yeah. So the, the Indian Constituent Assembly debates are very clear about it, the, the choice between modern uh, political values and a return to an ancient Indian uh, political system. And the constitutional framers in, clearly chose. They chose modern political systems, not just of election and representation, but also of defending and constitutionalizing liberal freedoms. Now, we can have an academic and intellectual quibble about exactly what that, that, that word liberal should mean, but if we take it to be axiomatic that individual lives uh, are, are important and that the, the base of all political and moral value is, is in protecting and enhancing every individual life, if we take that as being a sort of axiomatic uh, liberal position, the Indian constitution embraces that uh, in, in a fullest measure. Uh, it, in fact, I would argue, has a version of liberalism that's different from European or American liberalism, but is liberalism nevertheless. Uh, and I think our appreciation as a nation for what this unique liberal heritage means, or hybrid liberal heritage means, is a crucial part of the public communication tasks we need to undertake. Uh, so in that sense, it is no accident that India survives as a political democracy uh, with basic, basic freedoms uh, and uh, electoral choice. Uh, it's not an accident, and so for me, uh, those are chosen values, and um, we must do better in communicating what those values mean and, and protecting them. And this is uh, maybe our last point, uh, a big tradition of, of, of freedom, uh, a great uh, constitution which has survived uh, many years and many challenges, uh, and the Indians rightly are proud of. Uh, you said you have to communicate about it. A new generation growing up needs new messages and also needs new tools. How are you doing it? Uh, one of the projects we have is is, uh, is that we use social media and the like. Can you just in a nutshell summarize this? Yeah. So. I, I think that 21st century constitutionalism in India uh, will need to go beyond the old models of a sort of didactic classroom where people are taught a certain text and um, you know that's the basis of, of our learning of this constitutional tradition. It's, it, it's, it may be necessary but it's not enough. Uh, clearly what we need to do is to uh, respond to digital communication um, on the web and on mobile. Uh, this has to be accessible, become accessible in easy formats uh, to a generation that's, that knows very little about you know, deep constitutional history uh, and they must be able to access this material in a way that makes sense to them uh, around the everyday choices that they make. Uh, if, if they start uh, making the connection uh, between their everyday freedoms and the historical uh, battles that preceded them, uh, then the task of communication is complete. Uh, and, if, and, and to do that in easily accessible formats is the challenge for our time. Thank you very much for these explanations. I can only invite you to, to check it out yourself. All this is available online, CLPR, Center for Law and Policy Research. Google them or just look them up and uh, you'll be surprised at, uh, at the incredible amount of useful information there. Thank you very much for joining us and have a good day.